everyone, welcome back to another episode of Backstage Spotlight. We have a bonus episode today with the lovely Adam Braham. Hi Mathilde. Hello, thank you for joining me. So, would you like to explain your role as an agent? For sure. So, as an agent, obviously I represent and I look after performers, um, actors, dancers, singers, um, we have a few people who do commercials. I also actually do have a very small list of a couple of creatives as well. Um, and obviously predominantly I run Betty Lane Management, which works in association with Lane Theatre Arts. So a lot of my client list are students or soon to be graduates. Um, yeah, and essentially my, my job, I think, for Betty Lane Management is to establish people there, step into the industry, to get them their first kind of auditions, their first contracts, and then beyond that. What a great role. How did it all come about? How did you get into doing the agent and casting work? Because obviously you are a former Lane student, so you've been on the performance side of it from a young age. Yeah, so I was at Lane since I was five. I saw no baby way. ballet when I was five. Oh. So I've been, I've been connected to Lane Theatre Arts for a long time. Um, I performed as a child, as you said, I did a lot of work as a kid. And then when I was older, I came to Lane when I was 16, I did the diploma course, and then I performed. You know, as you do, you go out, I, I worked for a few years as a performer, and I think for me, I quite quickly transitioned into the casting, was the first thing that I did before agenting. Um, I started working for a company called Mad Dog Casting, which work on background supporting work. Um, and it was actually a casting director called Elenka Jelowicki, who also casts uh, um, independently from that company. And I worked with her on a few projects, and I just realised I actually had a passion for being on the, kind of the other side of the production um, and the creative side. So I started working in casting. I then worked for a theatre called the Union Theatre. Um, my friend Sasha, I did a show there, and she actually said to me, did I want to cast a project for her? Because I'd never worked in theatre casting. So I did. That was, oh, that must have been over 10 years ago now I did that um, and actually I've now been the in-house casting director for the Union Theatre for over 10 years so I've cast oh, maybe 60, 70 productions for them over the last 10 years Wow. Um, and then it was my current agent actually at the time knew that I was interested in the kind of creative side of the industry and she said to me did I want to work in the office and get to know how being an assistant was her current assistant was going on holiday she needed some cover so I did I worked in the office a few days a week and then it kind of went from there and I loved it, and I started there full time. I realised that that was my passion, not performing anymore. Um, so I carried on, and then I've kept kind of freelance casting in and out over the last 10 years, but it was really the agenting that became my focus. Um, and yeah, and I've worked for several agencies, and then I obviously went to, I actually went to PPA, uh, another drama school, and I ran their agency before looking after their third year and becoming the creative coordinator of the college. And then now I'm back at Lane Theatre Arts running Better Lane Management. Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> It's fascinating and especially how you can be going down one path in life and then something just mm. takes you off on a tangent and it creates a whole new career that you didn't imagine having. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about that anyway in life. I'm all about following your passion, following your joy. Um, I think it's really important, particularly I think in the performing industry, I think you have to find, you have to find passion, you have to find the things that excite you. Otherwise, it can become really hard because it is. We know it can be a really hard industry. Um, I'm sure lots of people have said that. So uh, for me, it was a very natural transition. I was very lucky. I know some people really try and find their place, but I kind of fell into it in a way. Um, but I did. Yeah, I realized it brought me more joy giving people jobs and letting them know they've got a job than actually going to the auditions myself. Yeah. It, it just didn't it didn't excite me anymore. So when you are working with a casting team mm. on that side of the panel, how, what is the process of casting a show? So essentially starting, God, at the very beginning, um, obviously you have to speak to the producer, um, who normally is the person that hires you, you'll then speak to the director, maybe the choreographer, the musical director, get an idea of what the show is about, get a feel for the show, and what their vision is. Our job really is to take their vision and to then be the kind of the, the in-between for um, creatives, whether it's actors, the agents, we do a lot of agents obviously, and we let them know the brief, what the show is going to be, what it needs to, what we're looking for in the audition room. We would then set up the auditions, um, arrange the timings, arrange calling people in, sending out the material, and then really make sure the day runs smoothly. Our job is to make the creative team have the easiest job possible when putting that show together. Um, and I think people get confused sometimes about what a casting director is. I think maybe they think we make a lot of the decisions. Our job really is to make sure people walk in the room and we present amazing options to the creative team so that their job is easier. And then beyond that, you know, we some, sometimes send out offers, sometimes producers will do that, and yeah, 
good. It's such a pinnacle point of sure. the industry, and it's it must be an exciting job to do mm. because it's just different every day. Yeah. So how does the, your role as an agent differ to the casting side of it? Yeah, so obviously as an agent I represent the actors, so a lot of the time I'm looking at the briefs that the casting directors are sending out, mm. so then I'm responding to those briefs, I'm seeing what they're looking for for the projects, suggesting clients, suggesting actors, um, performers, and then obviously we take the audition info, we pass that to our clients, we give them advice on the production, advice potentially on what to sing, what to, how to do their script, and then we're that in between. We're in between the performer and the, the casting director. So yeah. it's, a, it's a, another important link, I think. Yeah, definitely. And from your experience sending like self-tapes mm. through, what is the most successful way to film a self-tape, in your opinion? I think it just has to reflect you. That's one of the biggest things sometimes that if I, for example, if I'm casting a project and we do self-tapes first and then we call people in the room, it's when they don't match up to what we've seen on the tape. We want it to reflect you, to look like you, to sound like you. No filters, you don't have to use fancy equipment. I think the days of needing that are gone. And actually, one of maybe the only positives of COVID, let's say, is that people are so much more forgiving with that now. You know, really, it can just be you in a bedroom, as long as you can see you clearly, as long as it's at a good height line, your eye line is clear, the sound is clear, you haven't got loads of background noise. That is the most important thing for me. Yeah. And what about in the room when you're on that panel? What draws your attention and what makes a performer stand out to you? So I think what's really interesting in that question is that it depends on every creative team I've worked with. So mm. I work with one director quite a lot and she loves personality. Yeah. She loves to see the true actor come through. She is slightly less fussed about whether you've got an amazing voice. I mean, obviously, sometimes that's very important. Um, but she wants to see the person. She wants to see the personality and feel a connection. Um, and for me, it's, it's quite similar. I, I always love to get a feel for someone and think, are you going to be a nice person to work with? Are we going to want you in that rehearsal room? Um, and have you listened to the brief, ultimately? You know, have you come in and thought about what you're, you're choosing to present that day? And I think that's where my role as a casting director on projects that I've worked on always feeds into being an agent because I'm always trying to give that advice to my clients and say, just be you, go in, try and not think about the nerves. I know it's really hard to say, but a lot of the time the panel want you to be to do well because they want to cast their project. So that's always my biggest advice as, um, as an agent, I would say, to go in, be you, listen to what they want and just be receptive in the room. If they give you feedback, try and take it on. Yeah. Yeah, nice. If your client was to do a recall and had script material, a song and a dance call, mm. what would be your preparation advice for your client to go to that audition? To try and know what you've been given as well as you can. Not to say that you have to be off book, you know, sometimes I know it's only a few days notice, but just to know what it is you're preparing, you know, to know what you're presenting. Again, a similar sort of answer, I think. Um, if you've been given script, it's to make sure you know it inside and out that you are comfortable taking direction. Try and not get rigid with it. The same thing with your song. Don't just prepare it in one way. Be flexible with it. And the same with your dancing. You've got to go back in. Try and remember what you did in your first round. Go over the steps. Go over what you've been taught so that you are confident when you walk in. Because confidence, I think, is really key. Yeah, for sure. When you were performing yes. and when you did your auditions... Many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when you were auditioning was there like a standout story of like a traumatic audition <laughs> or like a really good audition um, that sticks out oh yes i have a standout terrible audition story which my friends always joke about to this day <laughs> so i was auditioning for for spring awakening uh, in the west end many years ago the first time i came here and i was the opposite of every advice i've just given i was underprepared i didn't prepare my my stuff at all i hadn't even sung it through with a pianist i had just downloaded it online and this is back in the day when you could listen to to a note bash online and it would kind of go boo, 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 and tell you the key it was in so i knew the key of the song i wanted to sing was too high so i just took it down a few tones started it off and thought that'll do that probably is gonna fit i'll take it in and i and i went in so when it's my audition walked in and the end of the song as well had a repeat to fade written in it. She said, repeat a few times to fade. So I said to the pianist, because I hadn't marked it up at all. This is terrible advice, by the way, for anyone listening. I said to the pianist in the room, just repeat twice and then stop. He obviously forgot by the time we got to that, because I hadn't marked the music. 
so the, so the music starts, and um, it was the song Belief by Gavin DeGraw, and um, he pressed the first note, and I remember thinking, Belie- oh no, that's, that's nowhere near the note that I thought it was, so it was much lower, so I went, Belief, and it couldn't have been lower in my voice, and I didn't have a very low voice, and the whole first verse gets lower and lower, and I didn't stop. So it's carried on and I went, believe makes things real. And then it was to the point that I was just I was just whispering and nothing was coming out. And I actually knew the casting director on that show, um, who who had called me in, because I was between agents, and I could just see him put his head in his hands <laughs> and think, What is he doing? And I was mortified and I didn't stop, it's carried on with absolute gusto that I wasn't no words were coming out, I was just going, Believe makes things real. <laughs> and then I carried on. The rest of the song was fine, and at the end I just carried on, you know, repeating, and he was kind of kept going with me, and I didn't stop. I just should have just stopped and been like, that's the end of the song. But I just thought, try and riff. I couldn't riff. It was horrendous. One of the worst auditions of my life. I never forgot it. I was very lucky that actually so they gave funny. me another chance to audition a few, oh, a month good. later, and I went back in and did quite well. But yeah, it was horrendous. I've never forgotten it. I was never badly prepared again after that. Oh, that's hilarious. Sometimes you just need an audition like that. Exactly, too. exactly. I think it turned around my audition technique from then. <laughs> I was never, I went through everything with pianists about 100 times. What were you like as a student at Lane? <laughs> Depends who you ask. <laughs> Um, I think it's a funny one because I obviously having been at Lane you know 30 years this year essentially I've been walking through the door um, I spent so much time here as a child and I think I was very 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 comfortable which isn't always a good thing I don't think I pushed myself as hard as I could have done I don't think I got to enough classes because I felt like you know I'd worked a lot as a, as a young performer I, you know I came here as an adult and I just I, I felt like I knew it all and that was kind of I was very confident I didn't struggle with confidence um and I wish I think I'm right but I wish I really pushed myself harder yeah um I don't regret anything I don't believe in regrets again I, I love the journey that my career has taken me and I don't regret anything but you never know maybe if I'd have gone to jazz or ballet maybe five times more you know that term maybe I'd have had more technique and it would have got me another job yeah. so who knows but you know I I, I was I was never naughty in a in a bad way. I was I was cheeky, let's cheeky. say. Cheeky. <laughs> and I think Miss Lane might agree with that. <laughs> Do you have any um, standout stories of you being cheeky at Lane? Oh, I couldn't possibly. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, we have a we have a tradition here at Lane Theatre Arts. When you are listening, the finale of the summer show is um, the same finale, razzle dazzle, that's happened historically for fifty years. And um, I was a bit naughty one year, and I thought it'd be funny to to put on the the female presenting cat suit and try and do the female <laughs> the female presenting dance on the stage. And um, it was not it did not go down so well, which I completely appreciate and completely understand why. Um, but I think we can all laugh about it now. That is the funniest story ever about you. <laughs> And did you get on stage? I didn't actually. I was in the wings at the Epsom Playhouse and um, one of the teachers kind of said to me, look, you can't go on. <laughs> and I don't know if I was actually going to. I think my confidence side likes to think I was going to and the rest of me thinks, no, I was just going to stand there for the fun. So I don't know. But no, I didn't. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? What could have happened? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so obviously you didn't have that transition of leaving home and coming to college as someone who didn't mm. know the surroundings. Mm. But what advice would you give for someone who is leaving home, leaving yeah. their hometown, um, flying the nest, yeah. and it's a completely new environment? Yeah, I get that question a lot whenever I'm on an outreach event around the country for lanes, and we do get that question. And my advice is always to be really sure you know, to go visit the place you're going to, never just take it from a picture or a video, go and see the town you're moving to, go and visit the college if you can. Um, and also I think the biggest thing I always say is try and connect with current students. You know, if you're an incoming student, speak to current first and second years, see how they felt, see the things that they did to make things a bit easier. Try and find people you can move in with and live with. Um, and just be really sure. I think it's it's such a big decision for people that you need to know you're not gonna get homesick. You know, homesick is very natural, but to know that it's where you want to be. We've said this a million times, it's it's really hard and, and the training at Lane Theatre Arts is intense. You know, it's a full on five day a week, sometimes six day a week training course. Um, you've got to want to be here. Um, so really make sure you're ready for that, whatever that looks like for you, but make sure you're ready. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned doing outreach events for yes. Lane. What do they include and how can people get on board with those? Yeah, so the best thing to follow our social media or to register on our social media, we pop up our... our pop up? <laughs> we, we put up our mailing list. So if you join our mailing list, you'll get access to all of our 
you know, future events. Our outreach events happen a few times a year. We're going to be doing two in the autumn term. We haven't got the dates set yet, but keep listening for those at some point. Um, and essentially it's a full day. We, we go to places around the country. We, we, we often go to places in Birmingham, Manchester, further afield, and you get a taste of what a day of training at Lane Theatre Arts can be like. We bring a faculty member with us. There is a dance workshop normally. There is a singing slash acting workshop normally. We also then do a QA, and a um, which I'm a part of, and the faculty members are also a part of. And you can ask any questions, whether it's about Lane's or whether it's just about the industry as a whole. Um, and really anything you want to know about the idea of going to performing arts college it really gives you a good taste today. It's so good that yeah. we're doing more and more of that. Oh, I love them. I absolutely love them. I think it's really important that we reach out to as many people around the country as possible and let them know that there is this opportunity to go and train and what that looks like. And I think people have a preconceived idea sometimes of drama school and it really lets them know this is what it is. You know, whether you come from an underprivileged background, we have opportunities and bursaries available, whether you are living in an area that maybe wouldn't have access to come to Epsom and audition for Lane Charles. It's really about reaching everyone. Yeah. What is the most common question that you do get on those outreach days? Uh, what the, the training looks like. Yeah. You know, really the biggest question is what does a day at Lane look like? So yeah. we kind of talk through that um, and talk through the, the key points. And like I said, it's it's a full on training. You know, I don't shy away from that answer. I let people know it, it's fun. Of course it's fun. You know, it's the industry, the good thing we are in a really good industry where you enjoy yourself but it's hard work and people need to be ready for that yeah. and um, yeah I'm very honest <laughs> yeah well best way to be exactly you mentioned earlier that you have worked previously at PPA doing mm -hmm. their agent stuff mm -hmm. how does Lane differ from other colleges in your opinion I think from having only been obviously working at two colleges but having visited lots of other colleges I think the thing that sets Lane apart is that yeah, you know, it sounds very cheesy to say, we're a family feel. Mm -hmm. I think one of the joys for me as the agent at Lane Theatre Arts, Better Lane Management, is I really do know pretty much every student. You know, it's my mission halfway through first year, by the end of the first year, to know every first year. Um, and I definitely know every second and every third year. And I think that's really important. And it's, it's a unique thing for me that by the time you get to the end of third year, I feel like I know people's strengths and their weaknesses and what you know, the sort of right things to put them up for. And I think that's why we have such amazing graduate success rate. Yeah. Um, and we really do, you know, if you look at the industry as a whole, Lane Theatre Arts is employable. You know, we, we do so well in that respect. And I think that is one of our massive strengths. Yeah. So when one of your clients hit third year and they graduate and they still don't have a job, how long do you keep them in the agency for? So everyone gets representation for the full three years. Um, we obviously, some people when you graduate decide to venture on and- Yeah, get um, other agents. Exactly, yeah, move on, which is absolutely understandable and, ex and great. Um, but everyone gets kind of a buffer time, I call it. They get a minimum of six months on the agency yeah. after they graduate, which I think is really important. I think it gives people that stepping stone into the industry. Some people need a bit longer to branch yeah. out, to maybe get a job, maybe- It's that comfort. Exactly, and I think it's that familiarity and then after the six months, it's a conversation. Yeah. It's a conversation of, are you ready to branch out on your own? Some people choose to become self-represented. Some people then move on to other agents. Some people end up staying. You know, yeah. we have a nice list of people that have stayed with the agency for many years as well. So it's a real balance. Yeah, and it's also, do you want to do this work? Do exactly. you want to continue? Or do you, are you because I mean, that's path? the thing, I think that's the joy of Lane. I think the joy of any performing arts training is that you can transition and transfer your skills you've learned into other pathways. Yeah. You know, I know you are really keen on presenting and your podcast and, you know, yes, performing obviously is a passion for you, but I think it's it's enabled you to find other strengths for and sure. joys. And yeah. I think that's really key. And I, and I still attribute the fact that I'm an agent now and have cast and done all these other things to the fact that I went playing theatre arts. You know, I don't know if I'd be doing it if I'd gone anywhere else. Yeah. So I still think your, your training is so key to just life skills. Yeah, definitely. So can we talk about contacting agents mm. and how to communicate with uh, yeah. people working in the industry? Because I know that that stage of having to send emails yeah. can be quite daunting mm. and not knowing what to write. So how would you suggest students approach this? I think keep it short, keep it succinct, don't send, you know, 10 page essays about your life and your childhood <laughs> and what you want to do and all the roles you're going to play. Um, agents are human and are busy, you yeah. know, I'm sure everyone's busy, but you know, they get a lot of emails um, daily 
and a juggling. So keep it really to the point and, and show them what you can offer them, I think is really key. Make it personal, you know, don't send a blanket email to 30 people on a CC'd email list. You know, really find out the person you want to write to an agent. Some agencies have five agents. So really look at the agent you're writing to. You know, if it was to me, I like Dear Adam or Hi Adam or just to me, make it about me, not just, you know, a lot of things I get being called Betty Lane Management is, hi Betty, <laughs> um, which always makes me laugh that I'm sat here called Betty. Um, so yeah, make it personal who you're writing to and just tell them what you can offer. Yeah. You know, this is, I'm writing to you because I'm a graduate from Lane Theatre Arts, let's say, you know, I'm really passionate about performing. I want to do this, this, this. These are the things I'm suitable for. I've noticed your agency, you've got a gap for someone like me. I love the work you do. And here's my CV and maybe a link to my singing reel or my dance reel or my acting reel. Yeah. Um, and that's enough. I think that really is it. You know, if they want to know any more about you, they'll they'll reply and ask. Yeah. And they might ask for more footage. I think don't overthink it. Yeah. Don't sit and ponder for hours about the best way to sell yourself. Just be honest. Be you. And again, don't don't lie. Just just tell them who you are and what you can do. And if it's not right, then you're not the right fit for their agency. It's important that you are a fit for them as much as they are a fit for you. So yes. I think that's really key. Yeah, really important. And um, if then an agent was to organise a meeting with mm. you, what do you think they'd be likely to ask? Um, again, I think most agents just want to get a feel of you and what you could offer them as an agency and what they could offer you. You know, I think it's about finding that partnership. I've had agent meetings in the past where someone's come in and said, I want to do this, 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 and that's it. And I just think, oh, that's not what I would see for you. Mm. So I've known it's not a fit because it's probably not the work I could offer them. Yeah. And then we've both parted ways. It's been a lovely meeting and it's just not been right. Yeah. Um, the, the flip reverse of that, someone's come in who I have maybe agreed to meet and I've thought, oh, let's see. I'm not sure if I'm going to sign them. And the meeting's been brilliant and we've connected and I've just got to know them and I thought, actually, I'd love to work with you. Yeah. Um, and then I've offered them and I've worked with them. So I think it's asking about you, what you want to do in the industry. And again, be honest. Um, try and be open-minded. Um, they might ask you about your background. It depends. You know, every agency is slightly different. We all do the same thing in a very slightly different way. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but out of all the shows that you've sent people for, yes. what has been the hardest audition brief or the most complicated? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, well, do you know what? Every audition has their, you know, the hard bits and the easy bits in in equal measure, and it, you know, some some processes have been longer, yeah. maybe. Um, some I'm not going to necessarily name the show but one it was a new show coming in and they did you know they did a three month audition process wow, so that was long. quite a lot and one of our clients went in and one week they were in three times because they kept going in wow, slightly different roles yeah. um and they must have had I think six or seven auditions over kind of that two or three month process Gosh. sometimes with three weeks in between so I think maybe for them that was quite hard and to really know where they sit within that process is hard yeah um, and also when you're auditioning for other projects Pleased to say that client did get the job and they're now in that show, right. so it was worthwhile. Um, yeah, I think, it, like I said, it really depends. And also I think sometimes when it's hard is if you really want the job. And if I yes. really want the job for a client, or if I get attached to that project and think they're going to get that one. Yeah. You know, I'm very positive minded. I sit in the agency a lot and I think they're going to get that. That's perfect, they're going to get it, and then they don't get it. And, it, oh. you know, it's probably, I think, sometimes just as hard on us as it is on the yeah, client. Sure. Um, it, yeah, it's a really tricky one. When you announce the news that a yeah. client has booked a job, how yeah. do you feel and what is, how do you do it? Oh, I love it. I, I really do love it. It's it's the perk of the job, for oh, sure. Like, it must be. And I'm, like I said, I'm really fortunate that a lot of the jobs I get to tell clients about, it's their first job. Yeah. You know, other than maybe Panto, which a lot of clients do, do throughout training, it's their, a lot of the time their first real long professional credit they've got graduating drama schools so that's really exciting for me and for them um i prefer doing it in person where possible yes um again i'm very fortunate that i'm based at lane theatre arts so i get to see the students so i can get them into the office i haven't got to wait days for them to come see me um for some reason we always get a lot of job offers when i'm out of the office so i end up having to do it on facetime yeah um but I do do it. It depends. I'm, I'm quite wicked. I have a wicked sense of humour. So <laughs> I like to get them in and lull them on a full sense of security. I don't want them to think they're coming in to be told they've got a job. Yeah. Because I want the high to be so high. Yeah. So I'll call them in and say, oh, I've got an audition for you. I just want to talk to you about it. And then they sit down and I might tell them. Yeah. So yeah, I like, to, I like it to be a surprise. 
I think that's fun. I don't think it's wicked. I just I enjoy the high. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. What are the reactions? Usually screaming, crying. Yeah, I mean, mix really. Some people get very shocked and go very quiet. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so fascinating how people react. I love it. And then people run out. And it, again, the joy of being here is to see oh. people run out and tell their friends and their friends screaming. And it's it's so lovely. I, yeah. Honestly, it's, it gives me so much joy. It's such a heartwarming Oh, I moment. love it. And I, I, I always end up telling my family, I'll call them sometimes, give them a dissect of the day when I'm driving home. And I always tell them, oh, my client got a job today. And I tell them what it is. And I just, I get so proud. Yeah. I'm like a proud uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, for someone who wanted to get into doing agent work, mm. what would you advise? Because some people might see your role and think, that is my dream job. Mm. I know you fell into it. Yeah. So, it's probably harder to just like show your process and how yeah. you did it. But for someone who was wanting to do it, what would you say? I think it might look like someone's dream because I make it look so easy to tell. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I really don't. Um, I think my advice is do some research, you know, really yeah. look, we, there's a website called the PMA, um, which is the Personal Management Association, you can look on there, they advertise a lot for internships and for oh, assistance, nice. yeah. um, so you can really see, sometimes they're unpaid, sometimes they're low paid, but it gives you maybe a taster if you might want to do a month's internship somewhere and get a feel of what an agency looks like. Yeah. Um, again, every agency is different, but I think I know a lot of agencies potentially don't want current working actors maybe sometimes they they want people to work with them if they think they're ready to transition into it yes just you know the information you might hear you know the confidentiality the thought that there's always that feeling i think the breakdown might come in and you're sat there thinking oh i could do that i'd still yeah. like to do that and i think that's very hard i think something that i was really lucky with was the second i was seeing breakdowns or sending out auditions i wasn't sat there thinking Oh, I wish I was auditioning for that. I was yeah. actually very glad to know that's not me. I'm glad I'm telling someone else about it. I love theatre and I love TV and I love film, but I love being a part of it without having to actually walk through the door and auditioning. Yeah. Um, so I knew it was right for me. So, yeah, that would be kind of my advice is write to agents. And also, even if they're not advertising, just write to agencies that you admire and say, look, I'm really interested in a career in the arts as potentially as an agent. I'd love to come and shadow you for a few weeks. Are you looking for any help? Are you looking for an intern? Yeah. Um, and get a feel for what that looks like. Yeah, so you never know what could come from Absolutely. just doing that. Absolutely, and you might realise, having done that for a month or so, that actually it's not for you. you you've done it and you've realised, I've had people work in the past for me who've actually gone on to do other things in the industry because they realised agenting wasn't for them. Mm. So it's, it's a really good way of getting a feel for what it is that you're passionate about. Definitely. So if you were to have a muggle job, mm. like a... Any any job that wasn't to do with performing okay, arts. Okay. Yes. What would you do? Oh, that's a good question. It would be something fabulous, <laughs> something very well paid. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Fabulous. Because I love what I do now. I love it so much that I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. That I don't love as much that I was just doing. So I'd have to be really well paid to balance the joy. Um, <laughs> something with travel. I love traveling. Yeah. So maybe, do you know what I've always, it's so ridiculous. I could see myself as like maybe a personal assistant to like a oh, huge celebrity. I think yes. I'd enjoy that. I can see you doing that. I can that. see that. Like managing their diary, booking in events. Yeah, yeah just hopping on that. the private jet. Hopping on them. the jet, yeah, exactly. And if they're not there, oh well. Um, yeah, something like that. I'd love that. Or even, do you know what? Something really random. I'd love to be an events or party planner. Yes, I was just thinking an events Yeah, planner. I would also I love to do that. It's, that. That's a real passion. I love organisation. So again, yes. probably why I love being an agent and why I love casting is I love organizing i'm such um i've got that sort of brain where i like things in a certain way i like to make sure it's all scheduled yes. i hate chaos and mess which is why i my life is quite planned and i feel like that's so important for your job i think so i think so well for me anyway i don't know for anyone else but for me i find it really important i write a to-do list at the beginning of every day so that i can look at what my projects are for the day and then for the week and i like to plan three monthly in my year yeah. I'm, a, yeah, I'm a bit anal when it comes to things like that um, so I think party and events planning would be great for me yeah. I think I'd enjoy that this is something I wanted to ask you mm. does your day finish when you leave the office? <laughs> absolutely not because how do you manage your schedule yeah. with auditions coming in at like I silly think any agent that says they turn off their phone at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock and don't work until 9am when they're back in the office you know yes okay there are times when you have to have a, a balance you know yeah. a home life and of course people have children and family lives and personal things you know of course however you juggle but for me I am um, again I'm a bit of a workaholic it's something I'm trying to balance better yeah. in my life but again because I find so much joy in it I don't mind it as much but I will I'll check my emails sometimes eight o'clock at night and you know sometimes it does happen sometimes a last minute 
past who has come in for the next day or recall material or you know human error just occurs you know sometimes a casting director has realized they've not done something and they have to do it late at night yeah. and actually when i'm casting sometimes i do do that weekends and evenings and my email signature says please don't feel you have to reply yeah. i'm just doing the work in my hours that fits me yeah um so yeah and again you know sometimes i work with international time zones so i could be dealing with people in yeah. america or in china where people are touring over in you know in asia so sometimes contracts and things do come in late at night and sometimes it's actually better because I don't get replies I can sit and send emails <laughs> so yeah I do I check my emails and yeah I try and do find that balance though like I said that you know I try and say to clients that I'm not necessarily contactable out of hours unless it's really important yeah and how often do you go and see your clients in the shows as often as I can I love it again the joy for me is I, I enjoy theatre I'm yes. a musical theatre theatrical nerd so <laughs> I love it so you know I'll go to every opening night if I can that's so nice um I really do try and fly around the world if I can, depending where it is, and it's not too expensive. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I do love it. Again, it, I think it's one of the perks. If you enjoy theatre, it's one of the perks of what we do, getting to see people. And again, for me, the, the pride of seeing someone on stage, a lot of the time knowing it's their first contract or second or third contract, or maybe something it's a contract they were just desperate to get and seeing them enjoying themselves. Yes. Um, same thing, seeing people on TV, seeing them in TV programmes or commercials. I just love it. Yeah. I just feel so, Such a so special proud. Moment. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So the last question I always ask my podcast guests yes. is if you could nominate someone to come and impart their knowledge on my podcast and I'll reach out, yeah. who would it be? Wow, that's a really good question, Matilde. Have I been on anyone's lists? Um, well... <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> um, who would I like to see on the... Oh, it would be someone... I'd love someone like Liza Minnelli. Oh my goodness, you know, right. I've gone high, Matilde. <laughs> I'm aiming big. Or like Meryl Streep. Do you know, I feel oh like Meryl goodness. Street just has so much to offer the world. Oh. You know, not just in talent, but from just experience. And I love, I really love, I'm such a sucker for finding out people's stories. Mm. Um, I love hearing people's backgrounds. I love finding out how they've got to where they are. You know, yes. and I think that's why I'm, I'm fascinated with celebrity culture in a way from people that have earned it and worked their way up, like people like Meryl, who have worked and got there. And... I love finding out people's stories. So yeah, someone like yeah. that would be fantastic. Well, unfortunately, I think pigs would fly before <laughs> I got Meryl Streep on here. You don't know, Matilda. But you, you never don't know. know. You never know. I'm never going to say no. Yep, always. Thank you so much, Adam. Thanks, Matilda. It's been such a pleasure having you on. And I hope everyone listening has enjoyed. And we'll see you next week. Bye.